you will not hear much about divorce in Jewish life. The one thing, by the way, the two things, three things, that are very low among the Jews, and there is a psychological reason why this is so. It doesn't just happen. Juvenile delinquency, alcoholism, and divorce are very low among the Jews, probably the lowest than among any other group. Although I want to tell you about one case of a woman who came to court for a divorce. They were married 30 years. For the 30 years, the full 30 years was murder. When it came time, she told the judge all the things her husband had done to her. He said, well, would you like to have a divorce decree right now? She says, you want me to give this dirty bum a divorce? She says, 30 years, he drove me crazy. Now you want I should make him happy? She says, oh, no. The judge says, well, what do you want? She says, your honor, I want he should leave me the way he found me. She says, how is that possible? How did he find you? He says, he found me a widow, let him leave me a widow. <laughs> the judge turned to the husband and he said, I'm going to give you a wife $100 a week alimony. He said, that's very nice of you, judge. I'll also throw in $50. Now, one very special... You need another minute with that one? Jewish people at all ages are interested in love and marriage. Love doesn't belong to puppy love or the adolescence of the young chickens here because love and marriage concern Jewish people from the cradle to the grave. One 40-year-old man married a 20-year-old girl and everybody was a little bit talky about it. They thought it was rather scandalous. And when some day, one day someone mentioned to him this indelicate question about their ages. He says, listen... It's not so bad. When she looks at me, she feels 10 years older. I look at her, I feel 10 years younger. So what's wrong? We're both 30. <laughs> I like the story of the 80-year-old Jewish man who came to his doctor and told the doctor he was going to marry a 20-year-old girl. The doctor said, a 20-year-old girl? You're 80 years old. Don't marry her. It might prove fatal. He's all right. She'll die. I'll marry another 20-year-old. <laughs> Perhaps the outstanding illustration of this eternal youth that exists in Jewish men at the age of 80 is shown by an 82-year-old man who told his doctor, he says, Doctor, congratulate me. I'm going to marry a 23-year-old girl. He says, what's the matter with you? You're 82 years old. You're going to marry a 23-year-old girl? He says, don't stop me. I'm going to do it no matter what you say. He says, well, I'm not going to stop you. But if you'll take my advice, if you want to keep her happy, taking a young boarder to live with you. <laughs> he forgot about the whole thing. He met him on the street a year later. He says, tell me, did you ever marry that girl? He says, certainly. Everything is wonderful. My wife is pregnant. He says, oh, is she? I see you took in a young boarder. He says, yes, she's pregnant too. <laughs> I wish we could all listen in to every Jewish mother as she talks to her daughter on the eve of her wedding, writing book. One mother said this to her daughter on, on the eve of her wedding. She says, darling, take your old mother's advice. When you get married, listen to me. She says, never undress completely in front of your husband. Always keep some of your womanhood in mystery. A week after the wedding, the husband said to his wife, tell me, does insanity run in your family? <laughs> she said, no, why? He says, that's the third night you've been sleeping with your hat on. <laughs> The, the, the reason why there is so little delinquency among the Jews is because the family life is so tight, so close, so important. And this, of course, is one of the most important reasons why delinquency is almost non-existent among Jews. The fact, too, that Jewish people, no matter how well they assimilate, are always against marrying outside of their religion. And a Jewish mother can think of nothing worse than having their, her son or daughter marrying outside the religion. Now, this is because they're ingrained from early youth to keep their Jewish religion together. And, of course, you can't keep it together when you begin marrying outside of it. Uh, of course, we're getting more and more of it as the world becomes smaller. One Jewish boy was sent to Korea, and he married a Japanese girl. A Jew to a Jap. When she gave birth, they had a Jew... 
One day, the little boy came to his father and he said, Ah, uh, Hong Wang, I saw that, I saw Huang. He said, yell your head off, you could be by mitzvah just the same. <laughs> One of the most important things that any Jewish parents hope for is that all their children will get the best education possible. A mother and father will scrimp and save and give up and sacrifice so that their son can go to college. This is so important, more so than among any other religious group. This emphasis on professional attainment, on education, learning, very, very important in Jewish life. So you can imagine the disappointment of one Jewish family who sent their son to at least three colleges and he failed in all three of them. Every time when he failed in everything, they decided to send him, you'll never guess where, to Notre Dame. And in Notre Dame, he finished his first year with straight A's. This was a real surprise. When they came home, they said, tell me something. In every college we sent you, you flunked out. In Notre Dame, you got all A's. How come? He says, well, he says, the first day I walked in there and I saw that guy nailed to the cross, I knew they meant business. <laughs> Another Jewish man had sent his son to Notre Dame and his friend said, you sent your son to Notre Dame? He'll forget all about Judaism. He won't even know that Yom Kippur comes out on the fifth of the month. The father got a little worried. So he sent his son a, a telegram. He says, don't forget Yom Kippur on the fifth. The son sent back another telegram. Papa, I know nothing about horse racing, but if you want to put $20 on me on Yom Kippur on the fifth, I'll say three Hail Marys for you. Age, old age, aging seems to occupy the Jewish thinking and their psychology to almost an abnormal degree. They fear it quite a bit, too. This growing old is very important consideration among Jewish people. On Collins Avenue in Miami, one woman said to a friend, tell me the truth, Sadie. Have you been through the menopause yet? So haven't you been through the fountain blue? <laughs> A Jewish lady showed up at a doctor's office one day. She says, Doctor, I think I'm losing my sex age. He says, How old are you? She says, I'm 82 years old. <laughs> he says, How old is your husband? He says, 84. He says, When did you notice you were losing your sex age? She says, Last night and again this morning. <laughs> Remember the quiz shows on television? One little dumpy Jewish lady came up. She was getting way up there. So the quiz master said, now, for $18,000, who was the first man? She said, that I wouldn't even tell you for a million. <laughs> At the Waldmere Hotel, one, one elderly Jewish man turned to a young chick and he said, tell me, would you like to have a sugar daddy? He says, yes. He says, take me, I got diabetes. <laughs> Is it any wonder then that when, when Dr. Kinsey was making his study, he stopped a little Jewish lady on the streets of New York. He said, tell me, missus, what do you think of sex? She says, what I think of sex, it's got a very good location on Fifth Avenue. <laughs> You see, sex and age and love and marriage are important psychological factors. May I tell you about one little Jewish lady who took an apartment on Park Avenue. She wanted to give a big party the following week. She needed to paint the house in a hurry. She couldn't find a painter. Try and find a painter when you need him. It's almost impossible. Finally, she found one painter. He comes in. Instead of a young painter, he's quite an aged man. She said, he said, Mrs. I'm an old man. I'm 73 years old, but I'm a good paint now. I'll finish for you everything in three days. I'll do what I can today. I'll come back tomorrow to finish up. It's all right. She's all right, Mr. Paint now. Do as quick you can. He painted away. He came to her at the end of the day and he said, Mrs. I'm an old man. I'm 73 years old, but I'm a good paint now. I finished everything but the kitchen. I'll come back in the morning, I'll do the kitchen, it's all right. She says, thank you very much, Mr. Paintner, come early. 
That night, her husband came home without asking, without turning on a light. He puts his full five fingers on the wet paint in the bedroom. The next morning, when the painter, uh, the painter came back, <laughs> she said, Mr. Painter, before you go in the kitchen, I want you should come with me first in the bedroom. I want to show you where my husband put his hand last night. He said, Mrs. I'm an old man. I'm 73 years old. Better you should give me a glass tea. <laughs>